Adrenomatic Excel Carry Over Lead. Brought to you by the Shrimp Troll. to 1975. Game 321. Indians at Expos. Welcome back, baseball fans. 1972-75 Carryover League. We got a series in the America League tonight between the Cleveland Indians and the Expos. The relocated Expos across the Canadian border from Montreal to Vermont to Burlington. Expos uh in the American League as well, of course, in the realignment, and they're doing very well this year. So let's just go right to this series. Game one, opening up in Cleveland, starts out well enough for the home team Indians. It's Bill Stoneman versus Gaylord Perry. Uh, Exo has got a good early start. Bases loaded with walks, then a sack fly and a double, two zip. Then a triple by Grabarkowitz, single by Hunt, three zip. Indians fight back with a run in the second. Then they get to Bill Stoneman in the fourth. They bat around and knock him out. It is a homer by Boog Powell. Have a nice year. Singles by Duffy and Brohammer and Lowenstein, some walks in there. It's a 6-3 game. They add another run in the sixth. It's a 7-3 game, and that is the final. It is Gaylord Perry. Did enough to win. Eight innings, five hits, three runs, did walk six, struck out eight. He'll be able to finish the game. Starts out well for Cleveland. They win game one at home. Then, then things become dark and gloomy for the Cleveland franchise here. Game number two. It is Steve Rogers versus Fritz Peterson. Now, in this one, the Expos unload on Fritz. With single, single, sack, fly, single, walk, single, sack, fly, there's four. Walk, single, sack, fly, five. A homer by Bob Bailey, that's six. And then he's gone after four innings, eight hits, and six runs. Six nothing, and you're thinking, oh boy, bad day for Cleveland. But they get a comeback going against Steve Rogers, who's, well, he's got a great card, but he's not pitching very well. Uh, fifth inning, it's a Lowenstein double, a Buddy Bell walk, a two-base error by Jerry White, a walk to Duke Sims, a single by Tovar, a two-run double by Alex Johnson, a sack fly by Boog Powell. And it's a 6-5 game suddenly. The Expos add runs in the seventh. It's 7-5. Seven, the Indians scratch out runs in the seventh and eighth inning with singles. And then this thing goes extra innings, and both bullpens empty. And the Indians have opportunities in the bottom half of three of the innings. They had runners at third uh, with two outs, could not get a catcher's X. They had them at third with one out. They just could not convert. And it takes all the way to the top of the 15th inning. Two singles, a ground ball, and a two-run single by Bob Bailey. Ouch, the Expos somehow win the game anyway that they... Had the six nothing lead, they kicked it away, and the Indians said, "Oh, we don't want the, we don't want it. We don't want the comeback win. We just want to tease our fans. We'll make it close. We'll tie it up. We'll send it to extra. But we really don't want to win this game. Please don't give us a win and and a two nothing series lead." And the Expos obliged. Here are some relief numbers. Bob Reynolds, two and a third innings of relief with two runs. Mickey Scott, three scoreless innings. Dale Murray, four and two-thirds scoreless innings. Uh, he'll be uh, resting for a while. We won't see him for a bit. Joe Grisenda, inning and two-thirds scoreless. Tom Buskey, three and a third scoreless. Ray Lamb, two and a third, one run. Hilga North pitched okay, gave up those four innings and the two runs in the top of the 15th. Series goes to Lake Champlain. Game number three. Oh, not another extra inning affair. Yep. It is Jim Perry for the Tribe. Dave McNally for the Expos. Neither bullpen has availability other than 
Ray Lamb can pitch an inning and Tom Walker could pitch a couple innings. So naturally, both pitchers go nine in a 4-4 tie. Top of the 10th, Tom Walker comes in, commits an error. Then he gets a strikeout and a couple ground balls. Bottom half of the inning, and this is what I'm talking about with Cleveland here. Ground ball to two second baseman Jack Brohammer, and he converts that into a single. And then Jerry White hits a fly ball to a three left fielder, John Lowenstein, who not only converts it to a double, but a double dot, 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 and that's your ball game. So, inning should be over, but it is over as the Expos win it five to four. Let's move on. Game number four. I won't keep you in suspense. Game four, same thing. Five, four, this time 11 innings. Again, Dick Tidro and Steve Ranko, the starting pitchers, they went nine innings. Cleveland teased their fans again. A homer in the first by Duke Sims, a walk by Charlie Spikes. We got a Lowenstein homer. They load the base. Actually, they got a walk, a single, a single, a walk in the second base. Don't score. Uh, every ground ball hit to Ron Hunt of the Expos, he gobbles up and devours. He's a 4-E18 second baseman. He's untouched. Yet to give up a single or an error this year. Perfect defense. 4 18 Ron Hunt. Either the Indians are incredibly unlucky, the Expos are incredibly lucky, or some balance of that. I won't skip too further with this. Top of the 10th and 11th innings. Uh, Bob Bailey makes an error. doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. So the bottom of the 10th inning... After a ground out, a ground ball to Jack Brohammer, he kicks it for an error. There's a strikeout. A ground ball to Jack Bro Brohammer, kicks it for another error. Buddy Bell kicked it an error this game. Duffy's made an error. The Indians went out of their way in the offseason to get all twos in the infield. Worthless. Waste of time. Buddy Bell's a two. Brohammer's a two. Duffy's a two. Much better than average defense. Um, but they are playing like crap. And then it uh, doesn't matter because in the bottom of the 11th, Billy Grabarkowitz hits a homer off his own card. He had one homer on the season, and that was it. Another 5-4 win for the Expos. Doing it with mirrors. Yeah, just uh, grabbing victory out of the jaws of, de of defeat over and over again. Cleveland's morale has got to be rock bottom here. They could have theoretically swept the Expos four straight. Instead, they're down 3-1. And worse, falling down in the standings. Down, 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 I say. Down with the Indians. Yeah, there they go. There they go. Here's the sinking act of the Cleveland Indians. You know, folks, this league has almost been designed to comport to the Cleveland Indians' success, and this is what they do. They kick it away. They're putting their own division with the Tigers, a horrible expansion team, and the Expos, and they can't, they can't fight their way out of a paper bag, man. They are just silly. Just a bunch of silliness. So, yeah. Not, not, pretty, not happy with the tribe. We'll just say it nicely. Just very unhappy with the Indians. You'll probably hear it in the broadcast. It's pretty hard for me to, uh, you know, really calm, be calm enough to, uh, you know, whatever. Anyway, here we go. Game number five. Uh, Gaylord Perry... And his 24 Gaudy wins a 72 and a 192 ERA. We'll take the mound against Bill Stoneman for the Expos. This is a repeat of Game 1, the game that the Indians won. It's a repeat game they won. You think they might win it again, but they probably won't. Leading off for the Indians, it's Duke Sims. 66, base hit. Nice. Had the cards in the wrong spot. Anyway, single. Oscar Gumball, 63. Second X. Here he is, folks. Don't even have to roll. 418 second baseman, and he'll gobble this one up. Yep, ground ball C. See, you can't get a hit off of that or an error. Forget it. Charlie Spikes, 610. Third X. Now, Bailey's been horrendous this year, so I totally expect him. Oh, except he makes the play there. Add them together, they're about fours. You know. 
Ron Hunt's playing at like a two level. Bob Bailey's playing like a five, five and a half at third base. Anyway, runner at third for the Boogmeister. Boog pal bounces at the second base. Here we go again for Ron Hunt. And he gobbles another one up, folks. You can't touch Ron Hunt in 2024. It says four on the card. He's actually a one. He's Bobby Gritch. He's... God, I can't think of all the, any other one second baseman off the top of my head. I keep thinking shortstops. Joe Morgan? I don't know. Yeah, he was a one. Leading off the Expos, Jerry White, 48 is a K. Ron Hunt, 46. Double on a four. You can't get that. And Mike Jorgensen, 58, center. <laughs> top of two, it's John, let it be, Lowenstein, 38, flies to right. Buddy Bell, 1-8. There's a triple on a seven, base hit. Veda Pinson, 5-11, is a walk. Jack Deadblowhammer, 2-5, is a six. Four, three, double play. Bottom of the second inning, Bob Bailey. 2-5, short. Ron Fairley, 32, fouls to the catcher. Lee Stanton, 1-3, flies to right. Into the third. Frank Duffy, 59, rolls to second. The Duke of Sims, 59, rolls to second. And Oscar Gumball, 212, hops to first. Bottom of the third, it's Gary Carter, 34, flies to center. Jim Nettles, 28, grounds to short. Billy Grabarkowitz, 56, strikes out. Well, yeah, it's just kind of the way it goes, folks. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You get the idea. Top of the fourth, scoreless. <laughs> Charlie Spikes, 410, pops to first. Boog Pal, 38, single one of 14, gets it. Lowenstein, 312, Lomax. Perfect, perfect. Bottom of the fourth. Jerry White. 1-7, double one of five is a base hit. Now you got Ron Hunt, the MVP, currently of the Expos. Apparently, I guess. Offense and defense. He did reach base seven times in that one extra inning game. Should count for something. A bunch of hit by pitches in there. Here's the pitch to Ron. 2-11, pops the third. Mike Jorgensen, 48, is a K and with two outs. Bob Bailey, 36, is another K. I'm only playing this fast because it's going to go to extra innings anyway, right? Buddy Bell, 2-9, short. Veda Pinson, 2-8, there's a single. We're going to have a bro hammer hit and run because it increases his batting average when he does so. And he converts. Jack did blow hammer, did exactly that. That is a base hit. Through the hole, holding on Pinson. He goes to third, and the Tribe have something going. They're going to bring the infield up for Frank Duffy. 1-9, left B question mark, must run Pinson here. 15, 16, 17, 18 on 19, and he scores. And with two outs, it's Duke Sims. 5-10, catcher's X. This is, yeah, it's Gary Carter, a very young Gary Carter, and he makes the play. And the Tribe have a 1-0 lead. Bottom of the fifth, let's pause a moment for station identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. All right, bottom of the fifth, Ron Fairley. 310, flies to right. Everybody but Dale Murray's available in the bullpens by this point. Lee Stanton, 17 is a K. Gary Carter, 57 is a K. Top of the sixth. Oscar Gamble, 2-2, two -two, bounce to the catcher. I'll show you a card if somebody does anything worthwhile in this thing. 2-9, and here we go. It's Charlie Spikes. Let's take a look at the Charlie Spikes card, finally. Of 74, Charlie's best year. Putting it all together with 22 dingers and a 271 average. Decent defense in right field. It can play every day. Probably for the only card in his career that I can recall. Nice card for Charlie. And 2-9 is Homer, 1-14, double the rest. That's a two base hit. Boog Pal, 412 pitcher, and with two outs, it's Let It Be Lowenstein. Walks. Two on two outs for Buddy Bell. And he bounces to short. Well, that was a wasted opportunity. 
Uh, bottom of the six, it's Jim Nettles, 27K. Billy Grabarkowitz, 16K. And Jerry White, 23. Pops the first. We go to the seventh. Veda Pinson, 16. Bounced short. Jack Burrowhammer, 15. It was his hit and run. That's been the key to the game thus far. And Frank Duffy rolls back to the mound. Well, before we go to the bottom half, can we improve our defense? Sure. Let's get Ray Fossey behind the plate. Great defensive catcher. Yeah. And that'll do it. Yeah, it sounds good. Okay. Stretch time here in Blake Champlain. Another game that's either tied or a one-run affair late for the fifth day in a row. Something like that. Totally expect the Expos to tie this thing at least. But before we do that, let's check out our seventh inning stretch music. We have been enjoying this really wonderfully obscure thing I found. Beautiful rivers and mountains. The psychedelic rock sound of South Korea's Shin Yung Hyung, 1958 to 1974. I found this song actually, Sunset. Came up in the uh, came up on the interweb. So we'll throw this one down. Maybe this will rally the expos. Here in the bottom of the seventh. It'll be Ron Hunt leading off. 58, skies are right. Mike Jorgensen, 56, flies to right. Bob Bailey, 48, a strikeout. Top of the eighth, Ray Fossey. 110, left. Oscar Gamble, 46, single one to six, can't get it. Charlie Spikes, 1-6, base hit, and the two outs. Boog Powell bounces back to Stoneman. E-17 pitcher makes the play. Bottom of the eighth for Gaylord Perry. Has to throw a shot at it, it looks like. Ron Fairley, 3-10, flies the right. Lee Stanton, 47, single one to 12, gets it. Gary Carter. 46, double one to four. Cannot get it. Flies to left. And Jim Nettles. One six is a strikeout. Beautiful stuff here, by the way. Wonderful record. Let me turn it down a little bit, though. Rally music just didn't work that time. We'll go to the ninth. It's still one nothing, folks. Thank goodness Jack Brohammer's a B hit and runner. <laughs> Or I'd be playing all night long here. So top of the ninth, it's John Lowenstein leading off. 6'10 off Stoneman, center X. You got uh, Lee Stanton's a two in center field. He makes the catch. Buddy Bell, 4'10, pops the first. Ada Pinson, 1-6, ground short. Bottom of the ninth, this is it. What do you do, Gaylord Perry? Yeah, there's no bullpen light. What's the point at this point anyway? Ray Lamb has two. <laughs> the bullpen's lost all three of the games. So, yeah, it's Gaylord Perry to win or lose the game. Leading off, it's Billy Grabarkowitz. Let's take a look at cards. We're that far down the rabbit hole here. Billy Grabarkowitz, 1972 card. Master of the walk and multiple infield positions and some decent homers. 1970 was his big year. He stuck around with a couple sub-200 seasons that were still productive because of the walks. This is 167 with four dingers and 18 walks. The pitch to Billy Grabarkowitz. 6'11 off Perry. Pitcher X. Can you feel your position? He's an E8 pitcher. This is where it's going to fall apart, I predict. Nope, it's not. Back up top to Jerry White. Let's check Jerry out. One of the first two... 75 Expos, well, Gary Carter would be number one. But Jerry White jumped the list. He he got up ahead of Andre Dawson and Warren Cromartie and Ellis Valentine and all those other guys to jump on the roster now. Uh, with a 299 average of 1975, good outfield defense, a little bit of speed. And here's the pitch to Jerry White. 36 is your walk. There it is, folks. Well, they're not going to win it. They're going to send it to extra innings. I guarantee you that. There's No, they don't win this game. They just torture me with extra innings here. 
Jerry White's a B stealer, but you got Ray Fossey catching, so that is out of the question. Ray's got a minus three arm. And here's Don Dog Will Ron Hunt. There he is. Second base, third base. A year removed for the from the hit by pitch championship. And he hits 309 and 73. Um, yeah. What more can you say about Ron Hunt? Smelling an all-star game. I smell it. You smell that? Ron Hunt, he looks like your America League second baseman in the all-star game with that great glove action. Here's the pitch to Ron. 410 off of Gaylord. Third X. Oh, boy. It's Buddy Bell, 2E23. Is he going to gum this one up? Fielder's choice. Well, no double play. At least it wasn't an error. And Hunt's at first. Still has to be held, understand. Because you don't want that tie run to get the second. So he's being held on. For Mike Jorgensen, let's take a look at Mike's brilliant 1974 card. Unbelievable card. He's a 1E2 first baseman. And, yeah, he's... <sighs> 310 hitter, 11 homers and 287 at bats with 70 walks. I mean, this this is a this card is criminal. I mean, you know, he is way up the way up at the top of the first base charts with a card like this. My goodness. Frankly, this card over. Okay, so Garvey, comma Steve, won the MVP in 1974 for the Dodgers. Now, granted, it was for a full season. But Mike Jorgensen's card is better in half a season. So that's the caveat there. He didn't, you know, he couldn't probably perform at this level uh, for 650 at-bats. But here he is now, Mike Jorgensen. Big moment, runner at first, two outs. Here's the pitch. 2-6 is your walk. Two on, two outs, and it's Bob Bailey. Let's take a look at Bob's 1973 card. 26 dingers, a 273 average, 88 walks, 513 at bats. Dude, he was an everyday player. Uh, pinch hitter here and there. If he was in the American League, he would have been an outstanding uh, designated hitter. But he was in the National League. He used to pinch hit for the Cincinnati Reds during their big red machine year of 76, I think. Bob Bailey. Here is the pitch to Bob. 2-10 is a fly ball to left field. And the Expos can't believe it. They look at the scoreboard. I thought the game was tied at one. No, no. You lost one, one nothing. They can't believe it. What do you mean we lost one nothing? Yeah, you, yeah, that's what the score is. Apparently the Expos got confused. They thought the game was scoreless. I thought they were going to extras. Ain't happening. Bill Stoneman. A gem, seven hits, a hit and run single, and a sack fly, two walks. Didn't bother striking anybody out. Pitch to contact, Bill. Complete game. But Gaylord Perry was better. Two hitter, two walks, ten strikeouts, complete game. 1009, 0109, 1702, 2020210. So, the Indians get a much needed boost. A road win in Game 5. Expos still lead the series three games to two. Oddly enough, the Indians have home field. They have to win both Game 6 and Game 7 at Municipal Stadium. We'll have the result at the end of the video of Game 6 and 7 if necessary. So stay tuned. All right, baseball fans. Here is the box score of the game you just saw. Cleveland winning in... I don't know what to call it anymore. Regulation? Is that is that a baseball term? Whatever. I don't know what regulation, bonus minutes, overtime, whatever it is in the sport that's now gotten all gummed up. The Indians win 1-0 in nine innings by scoring a run with a hit-and-run single and a sack fly. We go back to Cleveland for game six. Uh, another mess. Um, Rodgers went nine innings. Fritz Peterson went nine innings to no avail. They pitched fantastically. They got nothing for it. Uh, Peterson, nine innings, ten hits, two runs. Rodgers, nine innings, eight hits, two runs. 
Dale Murray has pitched twice in this series, eight and two-thirds innings, and a bunch of time off in between. He went four scoreless innings of relief, uh, one hit. Tom Hilgendorf, lefty out of the Cleveland bullpen, matches him twice. He's pitched eight innings in this series in just two games. Four no-hit innings. But in this thing, in the top of the 14th, Gary Carter hits a home run. And that's great. In the bottom of the inning, though, no. Bottom of the inning, Oscar Gamble has an RBI single, and we're tied again. Top of the 15th inning, who's pitching? Tom Buskey holds down the fort, while in the bottom half off of Tom Walker, single, single, RBI single, Ray Fossey, who started the game on the bench, goes two for three, coming in midway through this extra inning affair. Cleveland wins four to three, meaning that Nothing's really happened since the series started. They have gained no ground at all. It's three wins for each of these clubs. So what does Cleveland do to their fans in Game 7? Well, the answer is they play another extra inning game and they lose another extra inning game. Once again, Jim Perry goes nine innings, six hits and two runs. Total waste of time. Uh, Dave McNally went eight innings, had a 2-1 lead, in the ninth, a leadoff double by Tovar, and then Alex Johnson RBI single. The game's tied. So, is Cleveland? Can you can you win this game in nine innings, or just win it? You know, uh, if Fielder's Choice, Sack Fly, Boog Pal walks, and then Buddy Bell pops out to end the nine innings, tied at two. We go to Joe Grisenda in the 10th inning. Good for him. Uh, Expos get two runs on four base runners. Bottom half of the inning, no Dale Murray. They turn to Bob Reynolds. Three up and three down, and the Indians blow, blow another game. Fall further behind. Probably could have won all seven of the games or lost all seven. I, I'm, I don't know. But I've played about eight, maybe eight and a half, or yeah, at least... Two 15-inning games. I've played close to nine games between these two teams, and I'm not impressed with either one, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> Neither knows how to... Yeah. Okay. Enough of that. Here's the standings. The Expos are 12-9. and nine. That's nice. Tigers 12-10. and 10. Indians just didn't help their calls at all. Wasted a lot of fantastic starting pitching in that series. I think... All Cleveland pitchers went nine innings in seven games, which is astonishing. And only came up with three wins out of that. Ridiculous, folks. Break up the Expos. They outlasted in one of the most endurance series I've ever played, at least in the regular season. The Endurance Expos beat the Cleveland Indians four games to three. Thanks for checking this out. We'll see you next time.